What's up, Liron here, and today we're gonna to talk about vision and technique. What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. And today, as I mentioned, we're gonna talk about vision and technique. And let me tell you what I mean by that. The way I see it, there are two main ways that carry your creation process. One is very technique oriented and the other one is very vision oriented. Now I'm using these two examples because this one I did on location. It was very much a la prima. Whatever I saw, I put in there immediately. I allowed the vision to control the way I did things. This one, on the other hand, I went in with the goal of creating something that's almost photorealistic. And so I allowed the technique to dominate everything. So it dictated how I work on this, where I start, where I go, etc. Now I'm using these two examples in particular because none of these is better quote unquote than the other. These two are correct ways of doing things. There isn't one correct way, but let me tell you what I want to discuss in this video. So on the one hand, there are a lot of artists that are more led by technique, less by vision. Now, I don't want to take away, they have some plan for the painting, they have a vision for it, but they don't necessarily allow that to dictate the technique. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, you have artists that are more, the way they see it is the way they put it. A good example of this is Manel Plana, whom I featured in Painting Masters uh, a short while ago. Um, he really has that kind of thing where he puts things the way he sees them. And it seems to me at least that he allows his vision to dictate the work order. Okay. Now, on the other hand, you have artists like Thierry Duval, who needs are different because he's going for photorealistic. And what he does is really the technique leads the painting process. Now I'm at a place where uh, I think I have a good grasp of the techniques. What I would like to develop is my vision. So what I would like to do is allow the vision to carry my painting more. And I showed you recently this painting that I felt like really the vision carried it where I painted uh, my girlfriend and her friends studying in our apartment. Um, so what I want to do in this video is just show you a couple of paintings that were very much carried by my vision, then a couple of paintings that were, were carried more by technique, talk about the differences and maybe that'll encourage you uh, to try something different. Maybe it will shed some light on why you're doing things a certain way and how to improve it if you want to improve it. Uh, and I just hope you'll find that kind of thing helpful and useful. Okay. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. And I actually want to start with a very classic example of how none of these is necessarily the right way to do things. Okay, so on the right and on the left, and hopefully you can tell here, I have a painting that was really led by the vision. And here it was a painting led more by technique. Uh, both of these were deliberate decisions. So if you look at this one, uh, my deliberate decision was uh, to paint based on the, the, this, my immediate uh, um, impression of the view. I did this on location, outside, very pleased with the result. Everything is conveyed beautifully, the sense of depth, this car in the front and the cars at the back. Uh, I think it works really well and it's really an abstraction. And, and I'm actually proud to say that this reminds me of some of the work uh, of really great watercolor painters that I appreciate that do this more a la prima style. Um, I think this doesn't fall uh, in the in terms of the doesn't fall from them in terms of the level okay but this is really the vision led me I saw these trees I negative painted around them everything was pretty much done uh, on the first go and of course there are a couple of ways of doing things um, being led by the vision but this really is and you can see I compromised some proportions not everything is dead on the cars aren't necessarily perfect the perspective but the main vision works really well and you can tell what you're looking at and that's the uh, most important thing. And let me show it to you from a bit afar and hopefully you can tell really easily what you're looking at. And I think in that regard, I did a really good job. Now, let me show you another one. This painting I did with really the approach of uh, technique. What I wanted to do, and this is why I say it was deliberate. My goal here, and this is actually a view you can see from, uh, from our building. Uh, I wanted to to try and do an almost photorealistic uh, attempt at a scene. And you can see here, hopefully that uh, I was, I came close to it. Actually, this detail here and these details here work really interestingly to me. And I really like the way uh, they turned out. And um, so this is an example of how it was really led by technique. 
I painted the sky very carefully around the building. Then I, I added the small areas, filled them in one by one, making sure that I'm as accurate as I can with the color and with the value, okay? So this was very slow, very calculated, very measured, and led again mostly uh, by the technique. So this really goes to show you that there isn't necessarily a right and wrong way, uh, but I will say that doing it more this way really develops your visual perception, makes you more spontaneous, makes you uh, be able to think more uh, quickly on your feet, uh, and, and especially it's good for when working outside. This type of work that's a little more uh, deliberate and, and, and calculated. I don't want to say that this isn't deliberate, by the way, but you know, this way of working very uh, slowly with the technique um, has its own merits in that it produces generally more accurate results. However, they can, both of these can fall into each uh, of these two traps. If you do this, you may end up being too technical and too boring and soulless. Uh, and maybe even miss the mark completely in terms of adding interest for the viewer. But when you do this, you may go the other way around and mess up and create something that's way too messy and has no skill. Okay, so you have to kind of work on both. But I will say this, once you have the technique down, I and this is something I aspire to do for the next few weeks, is to go all in on that on practicing that because I feel like I need the other uh, way around. Now, what I want to do, I wanted to start with these two um, on purpose because I wanted to show you how there isn't necessarily right or wrong. Next, I want to show you, we're going to start with these, okay? I'm going to show you like 10 paintings, but we're going to go over them really fast uh, to show this way of doing things a little more uh, quick and spontaneous. So I've got the pile here and many of these you already know. Let me zoom out a bit. And again, many of these you may know. So uh, this is the first one and, and you know, I showed this in depth. I did a tutorial in which I created another version of this rooftops painting. This was really led by my vision. Uh, I just let go and tried creating it as I see it. I saw that it was dark, I went with dark. So I wasn't really careful or measured or planned. I had a macro plan of the scene and the overall drawing, but when I came to paint it, uh, I really went with it area by area and painted it as I felt it. And you can tell that it really works well. And I'm going to show you examples that don't. This one also, the drawing stage was very uh, carefully measured and very calculated. But then with the painting, I just kind of let it do what I wanted. And I also did, I made decisions that I didn't plan to do before at all. I remember starting to do this wash and just ending up covering everything without even planning to do it. Then the, the red here, I just did it on intuition. I was like, I need strong red. So I just put it there. So this was very much, I'm reading what I'm looking at. All of this negative painting around here, the beard was achieved the same way as well. I just kind of went with my gut and what I felt was the uh, right thing to do. Let me show you another one. This market scene, same thing. And you can see how loose it is and how much of details they, there aren't here, okay? Uh, and a lot of the colors and everything is all over the place. But this was really, again, I just went with my vision of the scene. I knew what I wanted to capture. And I'm gonna show you an even better example of this soon. But I knew what I wanna capture and I disregarded the technique. I did a lot of things differently. For example, this building here at the back, you don't even see it. I just put a bit of yellow and then just some lines that I felt like I wanted to put in there. I wasn't really... Um, wasn't really planning out the values carefully or anything like that. Uh, and again, when you work with the vision, sometimes you do things that are against your technique. Same thing goes for uh, this whole thing. So for the left here, I would never leave these kinds of highlights, but it just felt right in the heat of the moment, so I did it. Same thing with these little vases. Same with all of these highlights, really. I just went off on instinct. Um, same with this shadow, it was different in the reference photo, uh, and it does work, it works really well. All of this section I just made up, it's completely, well not completely, but it's very different from the original one. The way I used the green here on the first wash and then also on the second wash was very intuitive. Same for these lines and then the people here. All of this was done on the fly and uh, for example this beautiful combination of uh, of slow and, and, and blended areas and then this sharp dry brush here is one of the things that really make this one, I think, uh, beautiful. So this was a major success for me. This one was done on location and I really was in the moment. I just painted it as I saw it. I saw a dark background of greens, even though this is buildings, there's not even any sh shrubberies or bushes or trees here at all. The trees end somewhere around here, but I just felt like I'm going to put that here like that. 
Same with the shadows. I changed so many things here. And of course, it's not my most perfect work, uh, but it works well. Um, it was led by pure instinct. The, the, the way I did the, the sidewalk here, the way the sun shines, this car here in the shadow, it was really not calculated and really just with instinct. These yellow stains, and you can see here. This one also, I just, I got lucky because my vision of the scene was very strong, especially with this building here and how this building kind of moves in a, in a you know, I don't know what this is, hectagon shape, I don't know, whatever that is. It was all very, very um, much led by my vision. Same for this one. You can tell this one's really mess messy and I just uh, put an emphasis on having fun with it and enjoying it. This person I just added spontaneously once I was almost uh, done. This one, my sole purpose was to practice using a lot of pure paints. And so it was really, a lot of aspects of it were not calculated, were not planned out. And you can see there's a big mess here. But the beautiful thing about doing things just according to your vision is there is something more authentic to them, okay? There is something that is yours. When you work based on technique, a lot of it isn't yours. A lot of it is best practices, careful planning, influence of other artists. When you do it this way and you're really able to, a lot of it, more of it at least, is yours. This same thing, paint, painting I did in my apartment and I showed you the video process of this. Again, very bold. I went here very bold. I just did the first wash and then immediately put in these windows, panes. The people here studying the laptops, it was all done very, very spontaneously in one or two goes, really. Uh, everything is kind of blended together because I was so led by the vision I wanted to um, express. Now, funny enough, if I'd have done this in a more planned out way, more deliberate, perhaps the result would have been better. Uh, but I wouldn't have probably gotten these interesting areas that I never get, like this uh, green stain here that I think turned out really beautiful. I think it was a hoodie or something like that. Uh, really beautiful. And this blue on the jeans here, a lot of it came out really well thanks to me working based on vision. And lastly, I have this one I did on location. Um, again, a big mess. There is no sky wash at all. I went way too dark on it and it kind of hurt the impression uh, to some extent, but the message is really conveyed well. And notice this wash really gave me a lot of inspiration because I just started it and continued it and spilled it over and connected everything together. And it worked so well. The dry brush also gave me a lot of inspiration. There was supposed to be a tree here that I didn't put in. Um, a lot of this I just kind of winged. And this is the result, and it's beautiful, and especially this lower part. Notice these red, pure red touches next to the wheels, the tires, and, and all of that. And it's really led by the vision I had at the moment. So now that we're done looking at paintings led by vision, let's look at some led by technique. So I got a few small ones and then uh, two really large ones. So this is the first one I showed you already. Now this. And I love this result, and I love how colorful it is and how expressive it is. And I was, to some extent, of course, led by the vision, but if you notice, there is a small hint of me going not just by my vision, but by technique. Because everything is very carefully measured. So it's fun, you get a lot of creativity contained within, um, uh, within a, 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 some kind of a discipline, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. I, I can't really express these ideas better because they're so abstract. But, you get the point. Look at the cars. Look how, if you compare it to this big mess here, there's no way you can compare it to. Um, so this was much more deliberate, much more, uh, yeah, deliberate, calculated. I did the drawing really slowly. Uh, I took a long time to plan this out. There was supposed to be a tree coming up from here to justify that shadow, but I, I felt like it would be too much, so I just didn't put it in. And here you can see the pencil line. I don't care about that at all. Um, and you can see I almost use the colorfulness as a gimmick, almost, in this one. Because I am kind of just going for it uh, and adding a lot of paint, way too much, so it becomes very stylized. Uh, because I was really planning out this work to be very punchy with the color. So it was less of a, a vision-led work, despite having strong vision back it up. Uh, notice even the cars, it was all calculated. Green here, purple here yellow kind of here. So a lot of thought behind this. The result is beautiful. Again, it doesn't mean that uh, either one of these is better than the other one. Okay, so now we have this one. Uh, this, uh, you remember a study I did of Gustave Dorez, Dorez painting. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but um, this kind of study, it's based on a pen sketch. And here I 
am sad to say that because I was translating it from pen, I was very slow and I worked in multiple glazes and I worked like a scientist. And I don't like working as a scientist for the most part. I like to be more led by vision and what the, the scene evokes in me. And this is actually one of those scenes that I did work like a scientist. I do love the result. For example, if I hadn't worked like a scientist, I would probably merge the background wash and the wing and a lot of other things. But as you can see here, there's a strong separation between the different details. Almost like I wasn't, I th almost like I thought I wasn't using watercolor. Um, so, so this is more led really by careful planning. And I don't blame myself uh, because the whole goal was to do a study based on a, on a sketch or an etching, I don't remember. So you have to give it some thought, okay? So I don't really blame myself for this one, but that's just the result. And this one, believe it or not, this was very technically oriented painting. Um, the way I painted it was in sections very slowly i wasn't merging too many areas together i love the result it's beautiful but i did approach it in a very mechanical way um and granted it's based on a photo i took i did a few studies of it it was it was an interesting time in which i did this painting and i was working on other skills and different things but um i will say there is some spontaneity in some certain areas like this part with the red and yellow that hopefully you can see here and also this area was a bit, I added a bit of my own, but for the most part, this was very technically done. You can see here the highlight and then shadow, which means it's it's um, it's not beveled the opposite way around. Um, so, so you can de uh, dent, yeah, it's dented. So there's a lot of technical stuff go, that go, went into this. Now I wanna show you two large pieces. So I had to zoom out a little so you can actually see. So this is the first one, the painting I did based on old city of uh, Acre. It's called Akko in Hebrew. Um, and I'm gonna move the other one for a moment. And uh, as you can see here, it may seem like I was led by some kind of vision, but with this one, I was very technical in my approach and actually to my detriment, I would say, because had I developed a better vision for this scene, um, I would have done things a little differently, especially when it comes to how I layered the, these buildings at the back, I would probably have made them much lighter and the transition would have gone a little more gradual from light to dark. A lot of things would have done would have been done differently. Um, I feel like I was the most spontaneous with the cars around the bottom uh, because, and, and I honestly think this is one of my best cars ever because I was able to get that effect of the um, strong light in the tail lights. Um, th these of course also came out terrific in my opinion, but this was really <laughs> done using a technical approach. And you can tell some of that if you look at this tower it was a bit, I would have liked to let go a bit more here. Maybe it's hard to tell, maybe it's just me by the way. I don't know, but I felt like this was a little too much towards the technical side. Uh, and again, it's not necessarily bad. It just depends on what you're trying to achieve with the particular painting you're working on. And the last one, and this one's gonna be kind of a surprise, uh, is actually this one, the last painting I showed you. And now I finally show it to you in a bit of a better light and after it's done and um, so you can see here, this was one of the most technical paintings I uh, did. And I'm gonna zoom in a bit. And the reason I say that is because I worked so slowly and deliberately on it. And I really took my time with different sections and everything was well thought out. And I'm so grateful for that fact because this was what I was aiming for. I was aiming for a very detailed piece that I knew I'm gonna give up some of my looseness. I knew that my vision isn't gonna be as sharp. It's gonna be a bit more of a technical approach and I'm happy with it. I'm very happy with it because it was deliberate. Uh, and you can tell a lot of these things are really well planned. Everything from the horizontal lines to the vertical lines to the different shapes. We have this L shape here. We have all of these people. Now, you may look at this and say, it makes no difference to me. This is beautiful. So I don't care that it was done with a more technical approach. That's completely fine. And I'm okay with it too, because that's what I was aiming for. So I hope that makes sense. And this is really the last one I want to show you. But I think really the first two examples are the ones that uh, I think symbolize this the most, because if you look at these two, then really you can tell that you can do amazing job with both of these. Some of it comes down to style. If you look at, for example, Manel Plana that I sh showed recently in uh, Painting Masters, his work is much more like this, just the first impression. And I don't want to take from him the fact that he may plan his paintings carefully. I'm talking just about a mere execution. So his work is much more similar to this than to that. 
Um, and, and some painters are more in a different, it's a spectrum. So some are here, some are here. Um, and I'm at a stage where I want to go more towards the spontaneous so that I can bring back that knowledge into the deliberate, okay? So I hope that makes sense. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of these paintings and that you've learned something new about this. And maybe you recognize that you fall into one of these categories and want to work on that. So with that being said, let's wrap up this video. So this is it. I really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, video. I hope seeing these two types of paintings help you figure out maybe where you fall on the spectrum and whether you need the other side. Because I think if you can tell that maybe you're very technique based, maybe it will be a breath of fresh air to just try for once to allow yourself to go a little crazy and paint things as you see them. Uh, and I did mention this before, but I think when you allow the vision to dictate the technique, you may make a couple of technical mistakes. So some washes that you didn't plan to will merge, some uh, areas that you weren't as careful with, you won't be able to preserve some highlights you wanted, but this may be completely offset, offset or offset. What will offset is it is the things you will produce because you allowed yourself that freedom in terms of vision. So you may put in a stain of color that you wouldn't have done otherwise. It's so beautiful and it carries the painting in a nice way. And as you've seen, I have examples of these, these uh, kinds of things where I put in a paint in a bit of a different way, I allowed myself some more freedom, and the result was very unique, and, and it turns it into something more personal, I think, when you're able to do that. When it's more technique-based, you may get a very good uh, end result, but again, it may lack some kind of character in a way, hopefully that makes sense to you. But in any case, this is it, this is what I wanted to talk to you about today. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know in a comment below. I'm always interested in what you have to say about these kinds of things. Do you feel like you fall somewhere on that spectrum in particular or are you kind of a more balanced approach? Do you sometimes allow yourself this, sometimes that? Let me know and I will see you again in another vid real soon.